the most powerful digital camera ever built, has released its first images of the universe. More than two decades in the making, the U.S.-funded $800 million Vera C. Rubin Observatory sits atop a mountain in Chile's Atacama Desert. The images are composites showing the Trifid and Lagoon nebulas and the Virgo cluster. Over the next decade, it will continually scan the night sky, searching for new celestial objects. Well, Keith Cowing is editor of NASAWatch.com. He joins us from Washington, D.C. For more, Keith, you've seen the first images coming from this telescope. What's your reaction? Oh, I could probably pick a, I was because I, I mean, it was just astonishing what, what you could see. We got a little bit of a preview last night, but if you see these pictures, it's taken with a telescope. This is one I had as a kid. It looks like this, except the camera would fill your studio. And I've got a 48 megapixel phone next to me. This has 3.2 billion gigapixels. So what you're looking at is you can imagine that this little telescope is looking at a little piece of the sky. These pictures, one that showed has 10 million galaxies in it. So you take, and the human eye can't even really take in these images. Eventually when it's done, we will have a view that it's taken every night of the universe that unlike anything we've ever had before. And they'll make it into a movie so we can watch the universe changing. How do we process all that data? I mean, what do you do with so much data that even the human eye can't take it in? Well, as I say, big pipes and big fast computers, as a matter of fact, it's terabytes per day. And they have uh, that was sort of the biggest issue, not the optics or the telescope, but what do you do with the data? And how do you look through it? So AI and a lot of very fast communications and storage are going to be involved. And they've already proved that it worked because the images you're seeing now were run through that system. What are uh, researchers hoping to find out of this? What kind of discoveries are they looking for as they pour over this material? Well, first of all, when you take a picture with some of the space telescopes we have now, it takes a while to process it. And you get really amazing pictures, but it's a moment in time or it's a long exposure staring at one place and nothing else. But what this can do is take huge field of view. I mean, it's the whole, the whole sky as you would see it multiple times a night and then they just put it together and you can see small changes. One of the things they showed is a little spot where they would take these pictures of little dots. They're actually new asteroids. In just a few hours, it discovered nearly a thousand new asteroids. That's just in a test run. So imagine what you're going to be able to find in, and that's in our solar system alone. We haven't looked at exoplanets or anything else yet. So it's an astonishingly accurate, up-to-date image of the universe as it currently is, as opposed to how it might have been three weeks ago. We know that one of the mysteries of the universe is the existence of dark matter. Scientists believe that the substance makes up most of our universe. How is this new telescope helping solve exactly what dark matter is? Well, one of the easiest ways in physics to see something that you can't see is see what impact it has on other things because the gravitational feel of a very uh, large object can cause, which you can't see like a black hole, it can cause other things to move in a different way because of that. Dark matter is a pervasive, you know, we think, substance across the universe. But in whole, you can see how entire galaxies are affected by this and stars. But when you can do this snapshot, like, you know, every you know, a few minutes and assemble it together into a movie, a 3D movie, you can see things moving that you probably would never have noticed before. So it's better pictures, brighter objects, uh, and, and more up-to-date information than we've ever had before. I even understand that it might help us find a ninth planet in our solar system, which we one time had, I guess, decades ago with Pluto, but it's since been reclassified. Well, you, well, we could have a discussion what, what a planet is, but what they're talking about is something big way out there. And if it's way out in the distant solar system, it's dark and it's hard to find. But again, the picture that they show with the press release of these little streaks, these are a thousand asteroids we didn't know existed until the, last night. And so if this is able to look in the sky with other telescopes like the Roman Space Telescope, which will be coming online soon, and Webb and Hubble and all the big telescopes in Chile, Somehow, if it's out there, we're eventually going to see it. All right, that's Keith Cowing, editor of nasawatch.com. Thank you, Keith. My pleasure.